Hi there and welcome to the second video in this series about Django and HTMX where we build a live scores app. Now in the last video we gave HTMX the ability to pull the Django backend for updates to these scores. Now we're going to add the search functionality um, for the search bar here and we're also going to add an HX indicator that will give the user some feedback so they can see when the polling request occurs before results are updated. So let's start with the HX indicator work and we're going to go to VS Code and it's going to be in the fixtures.html file. Now in this file what we're going to do is underneath the main block I'm going to paste a bit of HTML and this HTML has a spinner um, and it's a div element here and within that div there's another div which has this class here of spinner grow. This is a bootstrap class and it's used to show a spinner on the page and we're going to see what that looks like in a second. Now if I go back to the front end and we refresh this page, this should be performing polling requests but we're not going to see anything yet because we need to add the spinner to our actual polling element. So within our HTML here, what we have is the surrounding div has an ID of spinner so we need to attach an HX indicator to, uh, to this div here. This is the div where we wire up the polling to the back end. So I'm going to separate these into new lines just so that it's a bit clearer and we'll add the HX indicator. This is another HTMX attribute and we set this equal to the spinner ID which of course refers to this div here. So what this means is when the request is in flight to the back end, HX indicator, this attribute from HTMX will add a particular CSS class to this here and it's going to change the opacity of that element from 0 to 1 so that it will show on the page when the request is in flight. So let's add a delay so we can see this a bit more clearly here. Now what I'm going to do is go to our views.py and if it's an HTMX request what we're going to do is I'm going to import the time module and we'll call time.sleep and we'll sleep for let's say 0 0.6 seconds. Now if I save that and we go back to this page and if we scroll down to the bottom here you see that every so often it's a five second polling interval so every five seconds we see this spinner here. Now what we want to do is we want to center this on the page and we want it to be right in the middle and we actually want to blur out the background as well so if we go back to VS Code I'm going to open a styles.css file and you can find this within the static directory which was on the starter project on GitHub. And I'm going to paste in a bit of CSS styling here. This is for a class called Indicator Style, which you can see if we go back to fixtures.html, um, I've actually attached this Indicator Style class to the spinner div. So what this class is going to do is it's going to give the spinner a fixed position and it's going to be centered in the page and that's what these attributes here in the CSS are going to do. So if we save that CSS file and we go back to the page here, let's refresh and you may need to clear the cache out. Um, on your browser but you should now see the spinner is showing up in the middle of the page and that's pretty good it shows the user when things are updating now what we want to do is we want to blur out the background and we're going to use a couple of custom HTMX events in order to do this so basically the only thing we want to see with opacity 1 is the spinner and we want to blur out some of the, the background and reduce its opacity so I'm going to cross to base.html here so this is the base template that all the other Django templates extend. And right at the bottom, right before the closing body tag, we're going to paste in a script tag here. Now let me walk you through what this is doing. We are adding to the body of the HTML document an event listener, and it's going to listen for this custom HTMX event called before request. So the two events that we're listening for are HTMX before request, and here we've got HTMX after request. And if we go to HTMX's documentation, you see they have a page for the custom events that they have that can be used to enhance the behavior that you have on the client side. You can see here a list of these and we've got the before request one here, which is triggered just before the Ajax request is issued. So we're hooking into when this request is occurring here in our custom script tag. And what we do is we grab the main element, which you can see in our fixtures.html. That is going to refer to this here. And the spinner exists outside of that main element, so it's not going to be affected by the changes we're going to make. So we grab that main element, and there's only one of them in our application, so we just index in at element 0. And we set the opacity of that main element to 0 
and we do that right before the AJAX request occurs. And then when we get the response, which is after the request, we are going to reverse that change and set the opacity back to one. So let's see what effect this has on our application. If we go back to the front end now, I'm going to refresh this page and we should now see that we get the spinner with opacity of one when the request occurs, but the other background content is actually blurred out and the opacity is reduced to 0.25. So that's quite a cool little effect and we're using custom HTMX events in order to achieve this effect. So this setup is obviously manufactured because um, as you can see here, we are we are getting the effect we want, but in the views.py file, if I go back to the, the view here, we're sleeping for 0.6 seconds. But in a real life application, you might be fetching a lot of different fixtures from the database. You might have to filter them down. So there might be a bit of latency. So it's useful to know how to do this. Um, we're just simulating it here, but I think it's a good effect to know about. So now that we've done that, we're going to add our search functionality to this application. So what we're going to actually change here is also in fixtures.html. The search bar we created was here, it's surrounded by a form element. And this particular input here is the actual search bar that you see on the front end here at the top. So what we're going to do is we're going to add some HTMX attributes here to allow us to filter down the query set that you see here by whatever the user types into this search bar. So let's go back to VS Code. Now below the placeholder here, I'm gonna perform a get request to actually search for this content. I'm gonna use the URL template tag and the URL is gonna be called fixtures. And that's the same URL that we're using for many of our other um, HTMX requests here. So the request will come in and it'll hit this particular view in our Django application. Now let's set up the trigger. The trigger in this case is going to be the key up event and we're gonna delay the sending of that request by 500 milliseconds. Now the use of this delay here will stop the server being overwhelmed with requests when the user is still typing. What it means is that after the user stops typing a particular character, if nothing else happens for 500 milliseconds, only then will it send the request to the back end. We're also gonna add an HX target attribute here, and that's gonna be an ID, and it's gonna be the fixture list ID. Now this ID here exists in our fixture list.html. It's this one here, and it encloses the for loop that iterates over all the fixtures. So let's see how this looks now on the front end. If we refresh the page, we should now be able to look at the network tab at the bottom here. And if I was to start typing into this network tab, let's say CH, you see we are wiring up a, an actual search request here. It's got the search URL query parameter and it's got whatever we typed in there as the value. However, at the moment, nothing is going to happen because we haven't changed our view to change what's returned here. So that's the next step. And we're also going to wire up an HX indicator element as well. So let me first of all go down to the fixtures.html. Let's go down to here. Now this trigger, as I said in the last video, you shouldn't be sending too many requests. I'm gonna actually change this to every 20 seconds. And that's a bit more realistic for something like a football app where the scores don't update every second. So you can get away with polling um, at a slightly higher interval. So we'll say 20 seconds here and I'm gonna save this. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want to add the HX indicator to our search element as well. So I'm gonna copy paste this here. And it's the same ID that we're attaching to this HX indicator attribute. And what that means is when we send a request now to the back end, we should see that if we send that request, we get the indicator showing up both when we search and through the natural polling that HTMX is doing. So that's everything we want to do to this particular input element. We've got a bunch of HTMX attributes that's gonna send a request. And now we need to filter down the results that are shown on this page here by whatever the user has typed into this search bar. So now we're gonna to have to amend the Django view to do this. So let's cross over to views.py. And I'm going to import uh, an object from Django's models and it's the Q object here. And now we're gonna see how to use this in a second. Um, this exists in the django.db.models package. So down here, what we're gonna do is, uh, after we've checked if all the games are completed, uh, we're gonna filter by the search parameter if it exists. So we can extract a search parameter using request.get, that gives us the, the URL query parameters, and that's a dictionary, so we can use the dictionary.get method, and we're searching for one with the key of search, and you've seen this in the network tab here. If we perform a search here, um, you see that we have 
this URL query parameter and it's the key is search. The value here is uh, CHE, but we don't need the value here. We just need to get the key and it should return the value if it exists. So we will check if that exists, if search. And then what we're going to do is we're going to filter down these fixtures by whatever the user has searched for. Now by default we're getting all of the fixtures from the database. What we're going to do now is we're going to say if we have a search parameter, we're going to reassign here and we're going to filter down the existing fixtures, which is all of them. We're going to filter that down and we're going to use a queue expression or a queue object here. And we're going to say if the home team, if that contains what the user has typed in, which is search, we will return that particular fixture if the home team contains what the user's typed in or if the away team has that particular search term. So we'll use I contains to do a case insensitive search. And again, we assign that to search. So let me quickly explain this line here. This is how you do an OR expression in Django. You basically say you have these Q objects and you're checking does the home team contain the search term and you're using a case insensitive uh, contains here. And you also say if it doesn't, we also want to check if the away team might contain that search as well. So if either the away or the home team contains what the user's typed in, that will be filtered and added to our fixtures here. So we're basically performing an SQL or expression to check whether the home team or the away team contains the text that the user has typed in. And one other thing we need to do, actually, I need to follow the foreign key here to the name of the team instance in both the home and the away team. So. Um, this looks a bit crazy now, but basically we're checking the home team, which is an instance of a team object. We follow that foreign key and then we check the name of that team. So rather than home team I contains, it's going to be we're checking if the home team's name contains. And same for the away team. So if we save that and go back to the front end and we refresh the page, if I type into this field here, we're not getting any filtering. Let's go back to the code and we're getting an a field error here cannot resolve keyword away home so this should be away team sorry about that it's not away home it's away team so if I save this again let's try it again and if I type CHE you see that it's now filtering down to just that particular fixture and if we type CH we also get Norwich in the results let's have a look at how to get the away team if we put TLE we should get Newcastle again we get that fixture now so we're filtering down the objects in the query set based on what's in the search bar. Now you might have noticed a problem there. Um, if I type CHE, uh, we get this particular result here, but when HTMX performs the polling request, it's actually going to replace everything with all of the results because the polling request doesn't know anything about these search parameters and you see it happening here. So what we want to do to finalize this video is we're going to show how to attach the value of this search bar in the polling request as well. So what we need to do is we need to go back to the fixtures.html and our polling request is sent from this div. So what I'm going to do is attach another HTMX attribute called hxvals and hxvals allows you to attach extra key value pairs to the Ajax request. Now the value I'm going to use here is going to be a JavaScript expression so we prefix it with JS and we're going to use an object in JavaScript with a key name of search and the value name we actually can use JavaScript directly here so I'm going to use document.getElementById we're going to get element by ID and the, the, the actual element ID here is going to be this search input here so if I copy this and we paste that in here search input and we can then get the value of that field using the dot value attribute close off the javascript object and that's all we need to put in here so we can attach dynamically what's in the search bar as a, a value here and we use uh, the key search because that matches what the name is so the server will get the same uh, key in this case which the view is actually checking here on this line so if we do that we should now see if we refresh the page if I filter this down to Chelsea, when the polling request occurs in about 10 seconds, we should see that it actually maintains uh, what the user has typed into the search bar and doesn't replace it with all of the fixtures because we're attaching what's in the search bar as an HX value. 
and you can see that that works fine. The polling request occurs and nothing is replaced. So that's all for this video. In this one, we've seen how to use HX indicator to show a spinner when requests are in flight. And we've also seen how to wire up the search bar using HTMX as well. We've seen a couple of custom HTMX events, the before request and after request event. And we've seen how to hook into those in our base.html file, which I'll show you one last time here, to actually change some styles within our document whenever these events occur. So there's a lot of flexibility here with HTMX. It offers a lot of things that you can use to customize client side behavior. And we've seen num numerous examples in this video. So thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed, please like and subscribe. There will be a blog post on this topic. Do check it out if you want more detail as well. And all of the code for this video will be on GitHub and linked in the description as well. So thank you again for watching and we'll see you in the next video.